Welcome back to Angels and Demons uh, Part 6. And uh, even as we speak of the angels and demons, these uh, oh, the angels, these created uh, servants of God ministering to him, and the demons, the fallen angels, which we'll also get into, we've made some mention of, but we will uh, get to in more detail as well. Uh, today we're going to uh, speak about the uh, uh, particular angel, which just by the way the scriptures speak of him and how they uh, refer to him and the and uh, the uniqueness of how he is treated uh, over other angels. Uh, the angel of the Lord will be our topic today, uh, and I think a little bit into uh, our next episode as well. But uh, let's begin with uh, our prayer will be one of our hymns, uh, uh, hymn 521, a couple of verses here from uh, Christ, the Lord of hosts, that angelic host, uh, unshaken. Let us pray. Christ, the Lord of hosts, unshaken, by the devil's seething rage, thwarts the plan of Satan's minions, wins the strife from age to age, conquers sin and death forever, slams them in their steely cage. Jesus came, this word fulfilling, trampled Satan, death defied, bore the brunt of our temptation, on the wretched tree he died, yet to life was raised victorious, by his life our life supplied. Amen. If you want to turn in your uh, Bibles to Genesis chapter 16, and we'll uh, pick up this topic, uh, which we we began a little bit uh, uh, last week. I'm going to set a timer here so I know how long I'm I'm going. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we brought up, uh, we introduced from the Old Testament. Uh, this is just delightful. We, we read about uh, a, a unique angel. He's termed as an angel, the, the Malach Yahweh, the messenger, the angel of Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. Uh, and uh, his uniqueness is uh, seen in that he accepts from humans uh, what other angels uh, do not accept. Uh, we saw in the book of Revelation a number of times where John, uh, the uh, apostle and the evangelist, uh, uh, as he, as our Lord Christ reveals to himself this, uh, this ap apocalyptic vision, uh, there are times where uh, John's reaction is to, uh, when he sees this angel, he, he falls down on his feet, uh, falls down at the feet of the angel and wants to worship. And the, and the angel, who is a creature, as John is a creature, different orders and different types of creature, but part of God's uh, uh, created order, uh, uh, and the angel will always say, no, no, don't do that. Uh, I am a, a fellow bond servant with you, a fellow servant with you. Don't don't worship me, worship God. Uh, the absolute right thing for the created angel to say. But then in the Old Testament, as we began talking about uh, last week, uh, this angel of the Lord, not simply an angel of the Lord, because there are angels of the Lord, uh, on a, in on occasion, a solitary angel of the Lord sent to a, for a messenger task. You know, think Gabriel going to the uh, uh, the Virgin Mary uh, with news of uh, of the child that she will carry. Uh, but we meet up where this uh, uh, you can call this the angel of the Lord, where it's a, a capital A angel, not just an angel, but the angel of the Lord, and where we see this kind of extended extended interactions with people. In the, uh, in the salvation history. I mean, we'll go to Genesis, uh, you know, first half of Genesis, where this angel of the Lord, uh, makes, uh, several, you know, fascinating appearances, uh, as part, and even part of an, kind of the, the, the side story of our, of the chief story, which is always the story of God's promise to send, uh, the savior of the nations, uh, the one through whom all nations will be blessed when he speaks to Abram uh, tells him to go to the, the land uh, that he will show him, uh, and that this ancient Abram uh, and his uh, uh, equally ancient wife, Sarai, who have no children, that nonetheless, the promise God makes is to save all nations uh, through the child that will come, uh, beginning this, this long line, that the genealogy which will bring us to through the son of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the, the son of Jesse and David uh, and all the way to uh, the one who is born of Mary, our Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, uh, this 
angel of the Lord, where it's you know capital A for angel of the Lord, and where Lord is all caps too in our English Bible, angel of the Lord, uh, angel of Yahweh, the, the I am who I am. Uh, uh, how shall we think of him? This, uh, this uh, uh, to introduce uh, what might be kind of a highfalutin sounding word, uh, to speak of him uh, is the way we'll read from him in the narratives. He, the, this angel of the Lord is, is, he's the Lord. He is the, the pre-incarnate Lord. You know, pre meaning before the incarnation, the incarnation, which is God becoming flesh, God becoming man in the, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. There, nine months later, uh, Mary and Blessed Christmas. But, you know, the, the one who takes up residence in the womb of the Virgin is also the, the ever existent, eternal, infinite, uh, uh, Son of God, the eternal Word of God, by whom all things are made. Uh, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Uh, begotten, not made, not a creature. Uh, and the one by whom all things are made. This is the second person of the Trinity present at the creation, the, the very word uh, which the Father speaks, by which things come into existence, as that word uh, does what it says in the saying of it. So this, the angel of the Lord, as we'll hear him described, uh, is, is the second person of the Trinity, the, uh, uh, the Lord himself. And uh, uh, there are some, there's fun in these, pa in these uh, passages that uh, there's always a little bit of debate here and there that exists about uh, a few of these, uh, but the majority of the passages are really very clear on the issue of who he is because of how he speaks, how he speaks of himself, and uh, uh, the worship uh, that uh, he brings towards himself. But uh, let's turn first to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 16. Uh, I like doing this one because this is the... Uh, uh, amidst the great promise that God makes to uh, to Abram, uh, that uh, he will, uh, uh, through his uh, descendants, through his descendant, all nations shall be blessed. God makes this covenant with with Abram, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the Abram's very own son shall be your heir to a man who has no sons. And you'll see the the wheels starting to spin with Abram as he. You know, he believes God's promise. In fact, this quite famously makes it all the way through the uh, uh, St. Paul in the New Testament where this uh, uh, Abram believed the Lord. The Lord spoke. The Lord made a promise. He will not lie. You may, you may say, amen. Yes, yes, it shall be so to the promise the Lord makes. Uh, Abram believed the Lord and was counted to him as righteousness. That's a very marvelous Lutheran sounding uh, uh, verse to uh, go back to over and over again. Uh, uh, Abram's works are absolutely excluded. He's not going to do anything towards this salvation. He believed the Lord and what the Lord spoke. And in that hearing, uh, 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 by grace alone, God who made the promise will keep the promise. Uh, Abram believes that uh, and it's counted to him as righteousness. Well, uh, in the meantime, some of the backstory in Genesis chapter 16, uh, as we, we take up the account of uh, uh, Abram's wife, he's not Abraham yet, that'll happen here in transition, and Sarai, she's not Sarah yet, uh, but uh, uh, the story of Sarai and Hagar, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of the, the side narrative here, which still figures rather prominently, and how marvelous that the angel of the Lord makes an appearance here, and also again in the story uh, of of Hagar, uh, if you remember, uh, Hagar is the uh, uh, Egyptian uh, servant uh, to uh, to Sarai, and uh, knowing that God has made this promise that through the through the son of Abram, uh, all, all nations shall be blessed, uh, 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 maybe quite naturally, and yet apart from the promise God actually made, uh, Abram and Sarai begin to wonder, well, how what might I do to make this promise come true, and. Uh, uh, Sarai saying, uh, well, you know, so far I, I'm very old. I have no children. Uh, I will give my husband, uh, my, uh, my servant woman, my slave woman, uh, uh, the bond woman. And so this is not a good plan at all. This is quite, uh, disruptive to, uh, to marriage. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, uh, Abram, uh, takes the wife, uh, takes for a wife, 
Also, besides his wife Sarai, now he makes Hagar, the Egyptian, uh, his uh, 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 her his his wife, and she conceives. And uh, uh, of course, this begins to be a problem. You know, uh, uh, Abram and Sarah. Sarai think that they're going to help God keep his promise uh, through the, the son that is to be born. Uh, they make their own plans. And so uh, since Sarai can't have a child, here, take this woman. She'll have a son for you. Well, Hagar does conceive and have a son. And there's this uh, uh, this interplay here you see in uh, uh, the end of verse 5 that uh, Hagar conceived and she looked with contempt on her mistress. And uh, uh, this causes all sorts of... Uh, 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 discord and strife within the marriage, uh, which is not hard at all uh, to believe. And, uh, 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 and uh, Abram allows uh, uh, Sarai to, uh, to, to, to send this woman away. Uh, Sarai deals very harshly with Hagar, and uh, Hagar uh, flees from her. Now, picking up here in verse 7, this is where we'll introduce the pre-incarnate Christ, this angel of the Lord who is not just an angel, but the angel of the Lord. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found her. This is, you know, uh, Hagar has uh, taken, uh, uh, has fled from Sarai after her ill treatment from Sarai, after Sarai gave her to her husband uh, to impregnate her. Now she flees. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. I love the fact that there's a location to this. And he said, Hagar, the angel of the Lord, says this. Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael. And it's probably good here to to know that the the name Ishmael, uh, which is rather rather famous in history, uh, means God hears. So Hagar has fleed uh, from the, the, the uh, the discord and the strife and the, the home caused by the fact that she is now bearing this child, Ishmael. And she cries out and the Lord hears, God hears, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. Your son, he shall be a wild donkey of a man. Every mother likes to hear that. Uh, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So Hagar called the name of the Lord, Yahweh, who spoke to her. Remember, that's the angel of the Lord who spoke to her and who said, I will surely multiply your offspring. That's something only God can do. The the angel, an angel, a a regular messenger, a created angel, can only speak for God uh, uh, and with the authority that comes with God's word. But here, the angel of the Lord speaks uh, 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 in the first person, saying, I will do this. I am authorized because I am the I am the son. Uh, the Son of God, I will multiply your offspring. It sounds very similar to uh, the verbiage uh, that God would speak to uh, Abraham, but of course this is not that promise, the promise to uh, by whom all nations shall be blessed. But God is still uh, giving uh, a, a, a mighty family, a great a, a multitude that cannot even be numbered, uh, this, uh, the great multitude for Ishmael, born of Hagar. And so, uh, verse 13 of Genesis chapter 16, she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. For she said, truly, I have seen him who looks after me. Uh, and uh, a little bit later on, then Hagar bears the son of Abram. This is not the son of the promise, but it's still the son whom God blesses and cares for and even multiplies. Uh, now, this uh, uh, turn a couple pages here to Genesis chapter 21, and we'll uh, uh, we'll pass by uh, uh, Genesis chapter 17, where uh, uh, Abraham is uh, uh, circumcised, uh, and uh, the rescue of Lot, which we had uh, looked at uh, before, and uh, uh, and go to chapter 21, uh, uh, right after the the birth of Isaac. Now, you still have this young man Ishmael. 
he is the son of Abraham and uh, the, the son of uh, uh, Hagar. Uh, this young man has been uh, growing up. Uh, Ishmael is about 14 years old when Isaac, the, the child of the promise, the, the child born to the, the free woman, uh, uh, to Sarah, as God promised, through uh, when the three visitors came, and and uh, this is when uh, uh, Sarah had laughed, and and uh, the Lord, uh, who was present there with uh, uh, these two men, who are angels, created angels, who later go down to, to, to Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, but uh, where God said, "I will return in a year, and uh, uh, your your wife will have a child by it'll be your son and her son," and. Uh, uh, this is where Sarah laughs, and that's where we get the name Isaac, which means uh, uh, laughter. But uh, uh, look at chapter 21, verse 8, because here's again this kind of uh, backstory and more of this side narrative to this other child, uh, the child of Hagar, who uh, don't walk by too quickly here. Ishmael uh, figures rather prominently in here. And again, we're not surprised to see the great tension and uh, discord which is in the family. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Isaac growing up, Isaac uh, uh, getting older, uh, uh, and uh, verse 9, uh, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian. Again, Ishmael's about 14 years old here or so, so time has passed. This is, you know, this is probably you know, 25 years after God had uh, uh, first promised uh, the child uh, that the child is finally born, and when God makes a promise, we we might prefer that uh, he keeps it within you know twenty seconds or so, uh, 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 not you know twenty five years uh, or a hundred years or four hundred years. And yet, when God makes a promise, it is kept. You may believe, you may say your amen, uh, and uh, uh, as with Abraham, it has been counted to us as righteousness, not by our works, but by taking God at His word, hearing His word, and and uh, uh, saying, yes, what God said, that that shall be so, because God will do it. But here in verse 9 of chapter 21, Sarah, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, uh, she saw the son, saw Ishmael, laughing. Oh, this is not good for the family dynamic here, a little dysfunction. Uh, so she says to Abraham, uh, get rid of this woman, cast out this slave woman with her son. This is the woman whom she had given to her husband to have a child with, and now wishes to uh, cast him out. And uh, part of the fear here would be that, uh, well, who's the oldest son? Who is the heir, according to the, the normal way of doing things? Well, gosh, Ishmael is the first son of Abraham. He would be the heir. And uh, uh, whatever uh, Sarah's motives are at this point, uh, she wants them gone and uh, send them away. And it would have just a, a tragic and horrible family dynamic here, uh, the kind of pain that's not uh, uh, always so distant from uh, even from our experience these days as we see the, the breakdown of families. But here, in the story of our salvation, uh, uh, you know, God says to Abram, uh, you know, whatever Sarah says for you to do, you know, this is your wife, Sarah, your actual wife, uh, uh, go ahead and follow through with that because Isaac is the child of the promise. Isaac is the uh, the one through whom your offspring, that offspring, that savior of the nations who comes, uh, Isaac is the one through whom your offspring shall be named. And yet, nonetheless, the Lord reiterates His promise to this other one, to 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 Ishmael, that he too will he will have a uh, I will make a nation of him too, and he will benefit from my care. This is the God who you know uh, reigns over the just and the unjust who. Uh, 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 you know, gives the sun to the to the evil as well as the good. He is working out your salvation here through Isaac, the son of Abraham. But what shall happen to Ishmael? Well, verse 14. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water. It's not you know, a boatload of supplies. And he gave it to Hagar putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. So it's kind of a, an echo of what we heard back uh, a couple chapters before, before the child uh, Ishmael was born. And Hagar departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Uh, you, you can look up some paintings of this, uh, you know, uh, Google uh, uh, Hagar and Ishmael. 
and you'll see this, this you know, sad, uh, the woman kind of crying out in a desert area, uh, the child kind of hidden under, the young, young Ishmael uh, hidden kind of under a, a, a branch in some bushes here. Verse 15, when the water in the skin was gone, it looks like death is ahead here. Who shall help them? She put the child under one of the bushes. and She went and sat down opposite him in a good way off. She doesn't want to see the death of her child because her, her child is going to uh, uh, die of exposure and uh, uh, dehydration and starvation. Uh, uh, and as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God, now listen to you know, the, uh, the, the subject and, and who's going to be doing it here. God heard the voice of the boy and the angel of God. Now here it's the angel of God, not the angel of the Lord, but but uh, 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 it's obvious as we see this unfold that this angel, this angel of God is is this Malak Yahweh. Uh, the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Fear not. You speak uh, a cessation to fear to the one who is in the midst of fear. It sounds so unhelpful. And yet, when one knows who's speaking, when, when our Lord says, don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. That should remove your fear. He says to Hagar, fear not. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is, under the bushes there, ready to die. Up! Lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand. For I, this the angel of God here, who is, I'll say, the angel of the Lord, the Malach Yahweh, the pre-incarnate Christ says, I will make him into a great nation. You know, angels don't make people into great nations, but God does. And as he promised before, as we heard him before. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Now look how he provides for her. This isn't even the uh, the main narrative and the, and the, uh, the, the promise of the, uh, you know, the, the promised offspring. This is the, the, the slave woman, the, uh, the, the child of the, the bond servant, Hagar. And yet God's care is for them as well. He will make them a nation. She went and filled the skin with water, gave the boy a drink, and God was with the boy. And we've heard of the, the angel of God here, God hearing the voice and God speaking. Well, there he is, the angel of the Lord, God. Uh, God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness. He was a wild donkey of a man uh, and became an expert with the bow. So there are kind of, uh, kind of two bookends of the story there with Hagar and Ishmael before Ishmael is born and after uh, Ishmael is born. And in both, the pre-incarnate Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who here is the angel of the Lord, the angel of God. Uh, let's next go to uh, oh, uh, Genesis chapter 22. We won't have to uh, even turn a page here. But in Genesis chapter 22, here is... Here is we're back on the, uh, the, the uh, to narrate the, the the main story, and you know keeping uh, keeping in mind you know where we've been already just just today. God has made a, a promise to a man uh, that not through the man's works or doing, but God uh, through the agency of that man, through the child of that man, and the, the children who will follow the offspring of that man, uh, He will. Bless all the nations of the world. He sends a savior, a savior from sin and death and from the power of the day, the devil. Uh, uh, but Abram is an old guy. He doesn't have any children, not a single one. So they, uh, plan A is, well, I'll, I'll, uh, take my servant woman and have a child, uh, through, I'll have a son through her. Well, no, no, that's not the child of the promise. It'll be through your wife. It'll be through Sarah, uh, whom your offspring will be born. Uh, uh, and not and the child now is born. Isaac has come. He grows up uh, uh, to be a, a young man here. And now here's this next uh, uh, speech of God when he comes to Abraham and says, uh, Abraham, take your son, your only son, your, your beloved son, uh, the son whom you love, Isaac, this son of the promise, and take him to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. We think of what this means to, to, you know, finally God has kept his promise. The years have passed. God has kept his promise. Now take the promise that God has kept for you, this son, your, your beloved son, your only son, as it is termed here, uh, the true son, the, the heir that God has appointed, 
even this uh, the second son uh, of, uh, of Abraham, and sacrifice him. Offer him up as a, as a burnt offering. And uh, uh, the place where I will tell you, you know, listen to my voice, listen to the word, listen to my promise, believe me. Now take your son, whom you finally received, you never had one, now I've given him to you, and offer him up. Uh, Mount Moriah, if, if some of you know this, this is really quite marvelous. This is before there is a Jerusalem, but uh, Mount Moriah is one of those uh, little mountains upon which the uh, when you go up to Jerusalem, you know, the, the hilly, little more mountainous there. You've got Mount Zion, where the, the temple would be built, and Mount Moriah, which is right there, uh, where the city would be built up, where the temple is built later on, the, the city walls later on. Uh, this is before there's any Jerusalem, though. Later on, uh, outside of the city walls, uh, God's son, his only son, his beloved son, uh, this Malak Yahweh, the angel of the Lord, who makes his appearance most graciously here in Genesis chapter 22, he will be taken outside of the city and in that uh, garbage dump area where you put the criminals, where you take out the garbage. God will offer up his son uh, on the cross for the redemption of the world. But uh, uh, so uh, as the narrative unfolds here, you've got, uh, I mean, think of the, the high emotion and drama. Abram, Abraham, is uh, uh, he has his son. God has kept his promise. You know, Thanks be to God. And now God says, uh, take him in and offer him up as a burnt offering. And uh, Abraham still believes God, that God, if God has given me the son, and if, if God, if, if, if God uh, takes this son, he will just have to, he will just have to raise him up. If this son dies, God will have to resurrect him because God will keep his promise. But I imagine Abraham did not sleep very well. Uh, verse three, Abram rose early in the morning, saddles the donkey, takes two other uh, young men with them. Uh, they bring all the supplies. They cut the wood uh, for the offering. Uh, they go right to the place uh, where God sends them, the place where God will show them. On the third day, isn't that I saw these marvelous little echoes, these verbal echoes that we find here. Uh, Abraham lifted up his eyes and, and saw the place from afar. And then he dismisses the two other young men. Uh, and, and even how he describes this, knowing what he has been commanded to do to, to take his son and offer him up as a burnt offering, to sacrifice him. And he tells the young men, uh, uh, you guys stay here with the donkey. Uh, uh, the boy and I, my, my son and I, we're going to go over there and worship. That's what he calls it. He's going to sacrifice his son for, for all he knows. There will be an offering made. There will be a sacrifice. But uh, uh, he calls it worship. And come again to you. Even there, the confidence that whatever happens, if my son is put to death and sacrificed, God will keep his word and promise. And uh, we will come back to you. I and the boy will come again back to you. And so they uh, take the wood, they put it on Isaac's uh, back. You know, this, this picture, you, if you look at Isaac carrying this you know, load of wood on his back and going up the mountain, uh, you certainly will uh, uh, see a, a, a type of Christ as he bears the cross to Golgotha. And uh, uh, they finally get there, and, and uh, as uh, uh, Isaac famously says to his father, and remember, he, Isaac's a young man. He's probably uh, pretty fast, pretty strong, probably can outrun his father. But he doesn't. He stays with him. He bears the burden. He uh, does not run or try to overpower his father. He too uh, is uh, uh, involved in this promise by which God will bless all the nations of the world. But he asks, uh, "Boy, we've got the fire. We got the wood. You know, that's important parts of the uh, uh, the sacrifice. Where's the lamb for the burnt offering?" And Abraham, without guile, without any kind of deceit, says. Quite truthfully, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And so they go on. They, they come to the place, verse 9 of Genesis chapter 22. They came to the place of which God had told him. So Abraham doesn't pick. God picks. That's where this worship will take place, by God's uh, order in the, the altar that is built up. This is a worship service. This is a holy place, the place on earth where 
God himself is present and where uh, a sacrifice will be made. Uh, Abraham built the altar there, laid the wood in order. He bound Isaac, his son. Remember, like Isaac, again, willfully, that, that goes uncomplaining forth here. Another, another uh, 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 whiff of the Christ to come. Uh, and laid Isaac on the altar uh, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. His intention, based on the command of God, is to sacrifice his son, make a burnt offering. He's got the altar, he's got the wood, he has the offering itself, which will be his son. And here it is, verse 11. But the angel of the Lord, the Malak Yahweh, not an angel, but the angel of the Lord, and we'll hear him speak, and how he speaks is the way God speaks. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. You can imagine with great eagerness. And the angel of the Lord says, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. That is, you, you believe him. You take him at his word. You trust him. You worship him here at this altar. You know, with your son. Now, your only son. Your beloved son whom God bid you to sacrifice. But that's not going to be the sacrifice. God himself will provide the sacrifice. In fact, God the Father will give up what is most dear to him. His beloved will be sacrificed on the cross for the sins of the world, for, for me, for the world. So don't lay your hand on the boy. Uh, now I know that you, you fear God. I mean, here's this, the worship of Abraham is to hear God and say, Amen, God will provide himself the lamb for the offering seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. There again, that uh, first person pronoun of the angel of the Lord who is speaking, uh, he speaks as God, because Abraham is not uh, uh, holding back his beloved son from the angel of the Lord, from the second person of the Trinity, from the Son of God, from me, as it says. Verse 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes, looked, and, and there, there the Lord does provide the sacrifice. This, on this, you know, Mount Moriah, this very location where, you know, many, many, many years later, there will be now a, a, a city, a Jerusalem, and a, a place where blood is shed, not far at the, at the, where the temple will be built and then destroyed and then rebuilt. But the place on earth where blood is shed, where God puts his name and his presence and says, there I will forgive. And then finally, not with the blood of rams or sheep or goats or ox or anything else, uh, but through the blood of his son. There in that, in that place, that very place, behold him, Abraham saw a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up. This ram dies. The sacrifice is given. A burnt offering instead of, you know, in place of, you know, for, as substitute for his son. So Abraham called the name of the place, Yahweh will provide, the Lord will provide. Good name, kind of nails it perfectly. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And indeed, in that very place, uh, in the fullness of time, uh, the son of Mary, uh, on that mountain of the Lord, on uh, uh, the place of the skull, Golgotha, uh, it shall be provided. God, who so loves the world, will, will send his beloved uh, as the, the full offering. And verse 15 again here. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. So, you know, look who the, uh, the subject of the sentence is and what he, what he does and, and what he says and who alone can say such a thing. He says, by myself I have sworn, the angel of the Lord says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. Don't you love those echoes? I will surely bless you. This is the angel of the Lord speaking. Is he authorized to bless? Yes, he is, because he is the true God. Here as the, a messenger, an angel, the angel of the Lord, but I will surely bless you. I will surely multiply your offspring. Now here's the, uh, the, the seed uh, and the descendants of the promise, not uh, of the bondwoman 
Hagar with her son Ishmael and his descendants. Uh, that's God will provide for them. But here is how God is providing for the whole world. I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven. This man who only had one son, and that wasn't the right son. And then he has the son whom God gives through his wife, Sarah, and whom he is to sacrifice. But no, now the Lord will provide the sacrifice. And Isaac lives. He will come back down with uh, Abraham, just like Abraham said to the uh, the two servants, I will, uh, the boy and I will go up and we'll come back. We're, we're going to go up and worship. Be present to the God who speaks, and the God who sacrifices for us, the God who serves us and gives life to us. And then we will return, which is exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I'll give you, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord says to Abram, I'll give you offspring as the stars of heaven. That's a lot. And as the sand that is on the seashore. Oh, that's a lot of sand. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring, here's another affirmation of the messianic promise. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The blessing upon you comes from this line through his offspring. Because you have obeyed my voice. God spoke in Abraham's uh, uh, did not work. All of his works are excluded. It's simply saying, Amen. God, do what you promised to do. You alone will do it. But uh, anyway, that's a, a, a nice trip through the, the Genesis uh, 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 accounts of the, the angel of the Lord. Yeah, the, the angel of God we saw before, but then also bringing back and, and uh, connecting with the previous account with Hagar and Ishmael. The angel of the Lord, the pre-incarnate Christ, uh, uh, who figures prominently, of course, not only as uh, uh, he who is born of Mary and comes to take away the sins of the world, but already in the beginning, from the beginning, uh, even as uh, God spoke to the serpent uh, in Genesis 3 and said, uh, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head, and how uh, intricately woven God himself is the God who, who, who can walk in the garden in the, in the cool of the day. Uh, and the God who manifests himself uh, uh, to, to preserve Hagar uh, in the wilderness, and, and Hagar and Ishmael uh, later when they are dying out in the desert, and the God who himself provides the sacrifice, uh, a ram back in Genesis chapter 22, but the angel of the Lord who himself, in time, in the fullness of time, will give himself on the mountain that, that near that very place. Uh, as the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And he too will uh, uh, will uh, conquer death from that and uh, uh, rising from the dead, uh, uh, announce that salvation to the world. Uh, next time, we'll, uh, we're will we going to take just one little quick peek to uh, Exodus chapter uh, 3, where, uh, uh, where with the introduction of uh, uh, the, the Lord calling Moses uh, to... Uh, get his people out of slavery to be a savior to the people, uh, uh, God's people, uh, the covenant people uh, there in uh, in Egypt in slavery under Pharaoh. And again, this is the burning bush uh, where the the angel of the Lord uh, appears. And it's not an an angel; it is it is the Lord? It is the pre incarnate Christ. But we'll look at that. And then we also want to look just for fun. Uh, a couple places in the book of Judges. Maybe that's not a book we dive into very often, but how marvelous that we see this language, this time before there were kings, uh, where the people asked for kings, but uh, uh, with some of the judges, uh, uh, flaws and all, Gideon uh, uh, and uh, uh, his encounter with uh, the angel of the Lord. And then also the, the parents of uh, Samson, uh, uh, Manoah and his wife uh, and their encounter with the angel of the Lord. Uh, uh, and their fear upon having seen him, knowing the angel of the Lord, he is God. We've seen him and we can't live. But they, uh, God does permit it. But uh, anyway, we'll pick that up next time. And uh, uh, in the meantime, if you want to read ahead in, in Judges, uh, uh, Judges chapter 6 and uh, Judges chapter 13, those are some of the, the texts we'll be looking at. But uh, as we continue our, our, uh, uh, our study of angels and demons... And here for the next day or two, uh, a study or two, looking at the, uh, the angel of the Lord. 
uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.